So you're me, and you're teaching math class, and you're going on and on about how the determinant of a 3x3 three three matrix can be used as a mnemonic for calculating the cross product of two vectors, when one of the students interrupts to ask why he keeps getting error messages while trying to do this on the calculator, completely missing the point. You swallow your exasperation because, as renowned education researcher Daniel Willingham argues in Why Students Don't Like School, the brain is designed to minimize the amount of computation it wants to do. So what seems like laziness and willful teenage ignorance is really just genetic programming. So you decide to switch tracks for a bit and do the cross product by representing vectors as linear sums of the base vectors i hat, j hat, and k hat, which have these beautiful properties. It's actually a group, but I probably shouldn't mention that. Vectors are confusing enough already. Anyway, while you set the students a couple exercises, your mind wanders. You wonder, if you can find a set of 2x2 two two matrices that satisfy some of the same properties as the base vectors. Well, at first blush, there don't seem to be many constraints, so you think about the matrices. You need any two of the three matrices to produce the third when multiplied together. You could get such a set with one diagonal matrix and two traceless matrices, so let's try that. After applying the properties to the matrices, you find three constraints on the four variables. So you can rewrite the matrices in terms of a single variable. That's not bad and they all have the same determinant, which is sort of like them all having the same size. I wonder if that's something deep, or just a bit of serendipity. Hmm. These matrices look familiar now. If I set C to be negative i, and then factor out a negative i from each matrix, I get the poly matrices, which are used to describe spin in nuclear physics. That's not bad. See, there's a beauty in math beyond the pretty sketches, but the artistic component of doing math also includes aesthetic choices during the creation process. As a teacher, I face a daily battle between the need to teach math as a set of skills, how to do math, and as an artistic endeavor. I try for a balance, but the realist in me sees that some skills are simply necessary if my students are to continue on to technical careers. You need to know the multiplication table, you need to know how signs work, and you need to know how derivatives are used to approximate rate of change. In the end, it's a sad inevitability that math as art often needs to take a backseat to math as social tool. Hmm. It seems like they're doing alright with this approach. Maybe I'll have a couple minutes to talk about group